It seems like Kamala Harris has also forgotten that she's running for president because she just keeps acting or trying out these acting skills. She tried the I'm on the phone uh, thing before. But let's listen to how she delivers her scripted lines in Detroit. You better thank a union member. <laughs> sick leave. You better thank a union member for paid leave. You better thank a union member for vacation time. It is so hard to watch. <laughs> Emily's is helping her. She's honestly the, the epitome of cringe. What's so crazy is I've seen her when she is speaking, which is so rare. She's done multiple different accents and it's kind of funny to me. I know she's She's, you know, speaking to not exactly the smartest crowd, but when she does, she does these inherently kind of like ghetto accents, which I feel like is not only kind of racist, but extremely insulting to her own audience. If Trump was changing his voice, I'd be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, this totally. is very weird. And don't speak to us like we're dumb, but I'm not shocked with her audience. And she does it in front of the cameras. It's, it's, I don't know why she, she's doing it. I feel like she has to be taking it upon herself. Surely no one is advising her to, to put on these accents. But the White House Press Secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, was asked about why Kamala Harris keeps putting on different accents. This is her response. Since when does the Vice President have what sounds like a Southern accent? I have no idea what you're talking about. She was talking about unions in Detroit using uh, one tone of voice. Is this something that same you Same line... Okay, Peter, ...that she, uh, she used the same line in Pittsburgh, and it sounded like she at least had some kind of a Southern I think, drawl. I mean, what? do you hear the question that you're... I mean, do you think Americans seriously think that this is an important question? How's the response? Nothing to see here. You know, this is just what the White House does now, just gaslight. It's so funny because every time Peter Ducey is in the room and asks the question, you can just see the life just flooding out of her because she's so stressed because he's the only one that they allow to ask real questions. But when she's like, does this matter? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah, I think it does matter that you're doing fake accents to your audience. And I think it's very weird. And you call Republicans weird every day. I think this is very weird and you should explain yourself. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Joe Biden is back after his 18-day vacation and after stuffing up while speaking to reporters, he's back to just staring blankly at journalists. May God protect our troops. Somehow he is still the president of the United States. I, this is crazy. We don't see him. We don't hear for him. I mean, this is literally just straight up elder abuse at this point. This is so sad. I mean, he must be propped up on so many medications. But then again, he probably thinks that she's the president now because he doesn't know where he is. Let's keep in mind, he's been on vacation like at least 60% of the time he's been president. Trump got shot and hasn't stopped one day. I know. It's incredible. Let's turn our attention to Donald Trump. We've spoken on this program before about how women would be better off in America if Donald Trump was elected. Now, just a few days ago, he announced a policy that would see IVF treatments, all of them paid for the government or insurance companies. Here is Donald Trump. I'm announcing today in a major statement that under the Trump administration, your government will pay for or your insurance company will be mandated to pay for all costs associated with IVF treatment, fertilization for women, IVF treatment. Because we want more babies, to put it very nicely. And for the same reason, we will also allow new parents to deduct major newborn expenses from their taxes. An amazing announcement, yet the Democrats can't handle that Donald Trump wants to protect women, make the country a better place for women. Just over a week ago, Democrats were suggesting that he would ban IVF. Here's Michelle Obama. Taking away our freedom to control our bodies, the freedom to become a mother through IVF like I did, those things are not going to improve the health outcomes of our wives, mothers and daughters. Donald Trump, he's just exposed them. They lie and they lie. But, but what do you make of his announcement? 
Well, yeah, they said he was going to do a nationwide abortion ban, which he said no. They, you know, they, all they have, they have to lie about him because the the party that's obsessed with protecting women's rights is only obsessed with protecting women's rights when it's about killing children inside of them. Uh, they don't care about the children being slaughtered by immigrants. They don't care about the people, you know, dying from fentanyl across our borders. And it's so funny, everything they thought they had on him they don't anymore. And also, I like this because if the right wing community is going to go off about family and having children and all these things, well, this is uh, right along with our values. This is a beautiful thing to do. And I think it's fantastic. And once again, this is another thing they're not going to have to go against him. And this is all they had. All they had was abortion and IVF. What mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. Well, it seems like the honeymoon period is over with Kamala Harris. Looking at the odds on poly market, Donald Trump is up by 3%. Obviously, anything can happen between now and November 5. But, but what do you make of the way it's shifting? Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. Uh, I'm on poly market every day watching because basically any time that Kamala now gives a speech or goes into public, uh, he goes up. And not only that, because I think he's doing so many interviews aggressively and going out there and getting on the ground with people. I think that's why he's doing so well, because a lot of these people who are interviewing him are, I think, a lot of middle voters. And not only that, he's now endorsed by RFK. And those mm -hmm. people were definitely middle and definitely left leaning. And it went from make America great again, which it still is to all of us, to now make America healthy again. So a vote for Kamala Harris is saying you want the country to be dangerous and unhealthy, and therefore you are just straight anti-American. Emily Wilson, it is so great to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us on Power Hour. Thank you.